Hello and welcome in today's video about Toon Shader. Today we're going to see how to make a Toon Shader right. We are taking a look at Zelda Breath of the Wild Toon Shader, but also covering all features a Toon Shader should have. This video has been suggested in the comments. If you have an idea or a topic you want me to cover, please write it in the comments below. As I like to say, it's easy to make a Toon Shader, but it's hard to make a complete one. Zelda Breath of the Wild is no exception. It looks simple, but it's a lot more complex than you think. So what is a Toon Shader? A Toon Shader is a representation of an object or a character with two flat colors. Then you have a specular light and also an outline depending on your art style. But this is basically the graphical core of what is a Toon Shader. Of course, Zelda Breath of the Wild Toon Shader has a lot more going on. For example, in this little cutscene, the Toon Shader cast shadows but also receive shadows it has multiple light sources anisotropic hair it's kind of a specular but for hair but the most impressive thing is the straight smooth and clean line that is dividing the shadow part and the lit part this line is really beautiful really clean and it's hard to achieve because you need to work on your 3d model and your normals as well you can also see we have rim lighting so many things going on in the zelda breath of the wild toon shader and today we're going to cover as many features as possible divided into three categories from the most important ones to the bonus ones after watching this video, you're going to know exactly which features you want for your Toon Shader, which one you're going to target in an asset in the marketplace or in a tutorial out there. Let's start straight with the super important features you want absolutely for your Toon Shader, so make sure you have it. The first one is the multiple light sources. Super important, not that obvious, not that easy. It means your character or your object is going to be affected by different lights on the scene, like the sun, torches, a campfire, a glowing stone, and all of these lights are affecting at the same time your character or your object. So this is something very important. I've seen amazing Toon Shaders on the marketplace or in the asset stores that only support two light sources. So be careful, this is something important. Lighting is important, so just make sure this is covered. Second super important feature you want absolutely, casting shadows and receive direct shadows. So it sounds a little bit obvious, but trust me, it's not. I've seen an amazing Toon Shader in the marketplace. It had all the features I wanted, I bought it, and I realized later it didn't support receive direct shadows. So I was a little bit shocked <laughs> because imagine your character or your model not receiving shadows from the trees, a stone, a mountain, that just cannot happen. So careful, double check, you have this one covered. Last super important point, correct shadow ram behavior. So this is the line dividing the dark part and the bright part on your character and you want this line to be very clean and smooth. The particular point about this is it's not something only on the shadow side but also on the 3D model side. Which means you can have a feature in your Toon Shader that can help you to clean and adjust the shadow behavior but first you need a model with a good topology and clean normals. It's not only dragging and dropping Toon Shader or your model, you have to make sure your three models has clean normals. Let's jump now on nice features category. So this is features that are pretty cool and give a nice add to your Toon Shader but that are not mandatory, not important. So we have anisotropic hair, which is the specular light for hair with the distortion. We have rim lighting, which is a light outline on the border of your character because the light is shining into it. We have customized specular, so this one is more about controls and tools for customization. Try to look different than Breath of the Wild and be original. Colored shadows, so just make sure your shadow is reacting well with the color of the environment. Outline dynamic, so for the people that are going for this feature by themselves, like programming by themselves, just make sure it's dynamic and adapting to the distance of the camera. For example, it's shrinking when the distance is close and getting bigger when the distance is far. 
So this is it. Now we just quickly mentioning some bonus features that are definitely not important but more for very specific situation and people looking into details. So we have normal map support which is something useful if you don't have enough details on the albedo and you want to catch up some details with a normal map. Another crazy feature is subsurface scattering for tune shading. So this is basically when the light is going through your fingers and your fingers are getting bright red because the light is going through it. This is a pretty luxury and definitely not important feature, but I've seen that it was cool, so just mentioning it. So this is it. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. You know now exactly where to go. You know exactly which features you want and which features you don't want. If you want to buy a tune shader or if you want to go for a tutorial for a specific feature, you know exactly what to do. We are 88 subscribers right now. Make 100 subscribers happen. Please subscribe and support my work. I put on the description examples of good tune shaders both on Unreal Marketplace and Unity Asset Store and also good tutorials as well. I see you on the next video. Bye bye.